Stan Saylor, good grief, is the state representative from the 94th Legislative District here in Pennsylvania. He, most importantly, he's also the appropriations chairman. I mean, he's kind of the guy in charge of the money in the state house. Good morning, we say, to Stan Saylor. Good morning, Stan. How you doing? Doing Good morning, Gary and everybody. Uh, doing great. On a rainy day, I hear we're going to have two days of this rain. Well, yeah, uh, and it, you know, this is cutting into my tea times. I mean, that that's really the, the biggest part that everyone should be concerned about is cutting into tea times because I, you know, I, I've been known to play a round or two of golf every now and then, like any any particular time, any when in day is is when I go play. But anyway, it's good to have you in this morning. I know you've been a little bit busy here of lately. I, I wanted to get to something this morning with you that, um, you know, we were talking about in conversation the other week. You and I were at an event and, uh, I, I, I heard you talking about it, and I was really kind of caught up in it. And it's how much money is being raised and spent locally this year on the election of 2020. You've been all over the state. Uh, you've been raising money. Obviously, you're you know you're a Republican, but I wanted to try to look at this this morning through the standpoint of just the facts and and what's going on. So you know, have you ever seen more money raised than is being raised on this election, and especially for a number of the local races which have turned national? We have the debate tomorrow, for example, between Eugene De Pasquale and and Scott Perry, and I know a lot of outside money is coming in on that. So give us the inside skinny, if you can, this morning, Stan. Well, you know, of course, a lot of money is being raised within Pennsylvania, as always, uh, and maybe a little more than normal. But what we're seeing uh, now is, as you're seeing on the TV, as you talked about earlier, you get to see a program in between the ads, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, is Hollywood billionaires and multimillionaires are really – Pouring what I call dark money into these races, where they're they're doing advertising for candidates, uh, particularly the Democratic side. Uh, they've never seen this much money. They have so much money they don't even know where to spend it because they can't buy enough TV time. And I'm not criticizing the Democrats, but for Pennsylvania, that's difficult because it looks like people are trying to buy this election from outside the state with these dark ads. And it's something I've always criticized the McCain-Feingold bill because that's what created these organizations. Mm -hmm. Gary, that can spend money, and you don't know who's spending it, who's paying for the ads, right. or what's in the ads is truthful. Nobody's being held accountable. Are you telling the truth in these ads, or are you lying in these ads? Um, that's the scary part. And You know, it's uh, interesting, really Stan. I, I look at these right. ads when they come on, and whether they're Republican or Democrat, and I, and I hear the ads about, you know, uh, uh, whatever it might be, about such and such stole your dog today, or he's going to take all your, your firstborn when he's elected, you know, whatever it might be. And, and I always look at the bottom right away to see who it is. And then I look up the organization to see who, what they stand for and what they represent. And I'll tell you what, it is amazing to see these organizations and, and what they're all about as you read through it. And again, right or left doesn't matter to me, but uh, it really has. And you and I talked about McCain fine gold back when that was happening and how this was going to come out of that. And you made a prediction at that time this was exactly what was going to happen, and it's come, come to pass. Exactly. Uh, I mean, look. If, if Stan Saylor runs an ad and his name's at the bottom of that ad, you know if you don't like the ad, you believe it's a lie, you can blame Stan Saylor. Right. But these other ads that are being run, you don't know who's running them. You don't even know who contributed to make those ads run, let alone the organization. Because these organizations that are running these ads do not have to tell the public and do not have to report publicly who gave them money. When hmm. you, if Stan Saylor's running an ad, I have to tell you everybody that gave me money. So that you know who is contributing to Stan Saylor. And so what has bothered me the most, Gary, uh, as somebody who grew up poor here in York County and, and has been very fortunate, God has truly blessed me uh, with success, I believe, is that we will elect a minimum of 10 socialists to the House of Representatives here in Pennsylvania this year. And the Democrats, uh, these outside groups, are trying to elect another 10. So we could end up with 20 socialists in the House of Representatives of Pennsylvania, not in Washington, but in Pennsylvania, which to me, I just never thought in my lifetime would I see socialists being elected to public office in our country. And that's scary because these are people who want to uh, put 11 million people on Social Security who never paid into Social Security. When people talk about, oh, somebody's going to take your Social Security, well, if you put 11 million people on Social Security and Medicare uh, that never paid in, you can bet that's going to affect your Social Security and your Medicare benefits. And I don't know that people understand that. They're, that the Social Security Administration has always had financial issues, but 11 million more people who haven't paid. And that's really what these ads are all about, trying to uh, manipulate the Social Security system. 
is is the money you know the amount of money that's being spent how big a difference is that is it just a matter of of you know kind of like an impulse buy for people who are seeing these things in the quick you know one minute loop uh, of what's going on is it is it really is that what it's all about or are um, are pennsylvanians i.e americans i.e voters citizens smarter than that to see through this stuff after you you know you get deluged with the same commercials all the time and and someone once said well if you tell a lie often enough it becomes a truth is is that the case or do we have generally a citizenry that's seeing through some of this stuff and maybe even getting tired of some of it your thoughts about that stan about 20 seconds left in this segment then i have one more segment with you go ahead well i think I'd like to think most people are smarter than to buy into these stories that you can put 11 million people on Social Security and everything will be perfectly fine. Uh, I do believe that. I do believe most people are smart enough. But there are people out there who get so wrapped up in uh, party politics that Mm -hmm. they ignore the facts because I'm a Democrat or I'm a Republican and i got to do this. Uh, But I, I really believe in the end, we have to face financial. The biggest issues for all politicians, Gary, is the financial success of Pennsylvania, their communities, and our nation. And I don't know that millennials in particular have an understanding of what the taxes and all those kind of things add up to and what it's going to cost them. Dan Saylor, State House Appropriations Chairman, with us this morning. Stan, uh, we, we had this shooting of this Walter Wallace, a 27-year-old young man. Tragic shooting. Uh, he came at the police with a knife. At, I guess they've been there That's the fourth time during the day. And uh, he died uh, in Philadelphia, immediately followed by looting. 30 policemen hurt. We've had, uh, again, more of this last night. In fact, uh, looters were shooting looters last night. Um, But what was uh, troubling, I think, was the way Governor Wolf responded to this. ABC 27 asked him a question the other day at a press conference uh, on another topic uh, by saying, and his, his response was, quote, I, as everyone, is really sad by the death of the victim. And I think I share in mourning with the family. Anytime that happens is a tragedy for whatever reason, and I think we need to make sure that we follow up, find out what happened. I and my staff have in constant communication, since, have been in constant communication since last night with the folks in Philadelphia, and the hope is that it doesn't escalate to anything more than the peaceful protests uh, than I think this kind of situation brings out. Uh, uh, first of all, you know, I, I saw then the Fraternal Order of Police came out yesterday, and basically said, uh, quote, this was the president of the Fraternal Order of Police, uh, State Lodge uh, President Les Neary, said, quote, what happened Monday night in Philadelphia was a tragedy for everyone involved. But to hear Governor Wolf during a recent interview rush to unfounded conclusions by saying, quote, this looks like part of the cycle of injustice that has been going on far too long, unquote, was a total failure of good judgment and true leadership on his part. Such statements only serve to fuel anti-police false narrative used by some for their own political purposes. Your thoughts about what the governor had to say on this the other day and the fact that he apparently took a side right away uh, as opposed to really allowing this thing to get uh, investigated and and to air out. And again, peaceful protest is not what happened there the other night. It was anything but peaceful. 30 policemen hurt. One had was run over by a car and with a broken leg. Uh, your thoughts about all that? Well, I, I find it violence and this breaking in and, uh, destroying people's properties, not just, you know, they talk about the big box stores, but there's a lot of black and minority businesses in Philadelphia that have been destroyed. Uh, it's not, you know, that's what I find amazing is when these protests take place, uh, the president, uh, Vice President Biden and Governor Wolf act like they're peaceful protests. They're not peaceful. These are people who don't care about anybody, the police or the victim. And I'm, I'm sorry, the governor and, and Vice President Biden need to understand every day a, a man or a woman in a blue uniform is showing up at somebody's house to save their life or to protect them from a domestic violence dis, uh, issue, any number of things. And every day they put their life on the line, and you don't feel any sympathy for them. I, I've seen Joe Biden, for instance, the other day. He also sent his sympathy to the victim and the family. I right. get that. But – he, when the police officers are killed or injured, he says nothing about the police officers. And him and right. Governor Wolf don't get it. These men and women who, when I was growing up, if you were a police officer, particularly out in York County, not in the city of York, mm-hmm. you, you didn't, you weren't as, in a as dangerous a job as maybe somebody in the city of York was. Today, that's not true. Every day, every police officer who goes to work 
may not come home to his children and his wife or her husband. And for people in political life not to get the severity and the fact that these people every day put their life on the line and how many police officers are killed a year, right? it's just shameful and immoral. Well, and for police officers not to feel the full-throated support of the leaders who are in charge of uh, executing the laws in the state, like the governor, for example, or like a potential president, uh, you know, you, you're, you're looking at this and saying, Who, who's going to support me? If they're not supporting me, you know, how, how are people going to be expected to support me? And the, the idea here that these police went out there, and then we have all this Monday morning quarterbacking that comes about later and says, well, you should have used a stun gun. You should have used this. Like, like we really know what they go through or how to deal with something in a, in a span of a few seconds, as we saw the other week in Lancaster here where a policeman had to make a choice in five seconds with a person running after them with a knife. I mean, this is, it's got to be in, insane. And to somehow give credence to anybody who would cause violence or rob stores in their very own community or take Christmas trees or TVs out of these places, I mean, it's beyond the pale right now. And I think that's one of the things that we're fighting about in this country, that we've allowed politics to allow us as federal or, and, and state officials to pander to, uh, somehow pander, even if it's in a tacit way, to violence. About 30 seconds left. Final thoughts on your part. Well, Gary, a stun gun doesn't always work on, on victims. Uh, whether it's mental illness or whether it's drugs, stun guns don't always work. Everybody makes like stun guns are the perfect solution out there. They're not. They don't always work on, on the people when they're being attacked. It depends on why they're, you know, what's in their system. Uh, some people can continue even being stunned, continue the attack. Mm -hmm. So, and we've seen that across America. So somewhere along the line, uh, I think the public's got to decide about public safety. Do they want safe place for their children and everybody to walk around the street, go to restaurants, malls, and or do they want chaos and anarchy yeah. that these people are trying to sow? They yeah, it's about time about to quit people. pandering and start supporting, and, and that's going to be the main thing. And where there is injustice, let's pounce on it. Let's knock it down, but let's not paint everybody uh, in, a, in a world that talks about, hey, we don't want profiling, and then they go out and do the very same thing. Let's not allow that to happen, especially to the people that represent us in law and safety in our communities. Uh, Stan, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Appreciate you tackling both those topics today, and we look forward to talking to you uh, very soon, my friend. Take care now. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.